We have hauled this thing for thousands of miles. We've hauled it from the Mexico border all the way up to the Canadian border. We've hauled it with a 2004 GMC three-quarter ton pickup with a six-liter gas engine. We've also hauled it with a 2020 Chevy Colorado Z71 with the V6 in it. Right now, fully loaded, the trailer weighs about 3,300 pounds, which it's a 3,500 pound trailer. We're getting really close to the limits of this trailer. The first thing I would want want is a seven foot wide trailer instead of a six foot wide trailer. A six foot wide trailer measures 69 inches from inside of the wall to the inside of the wall. That's five foot nine inches. I'm five foot ten inches. It makes it very difficult to sleep sideways in this trailer without bumping my head and my feet on the wall. Our bed has to be front to back. If you had a seven foot trailer, you could position the beds sideways and save some room. Now, the downside of that is if one of you needs to get up and go to the restroom, you got the crawling over thing. This whole trailer build is a compromise between weight, cost, and strength, convenience versus inconvenience, what you can carry, what you can't carry. So that would be up to you on the compromise on the bed. Do you want it sideways or do you want it long ways? The next thing I would be considering is I would want my trailer to be made out of box tubing and not the Z channel. The Z channel, it's functional, but it's not as strong as the box tubing. Unfortunately, the only way to be for sure that you have a trailer made of box tubing is to take the interior wall off to see the box tubing. They both look the same when the interior wall is put on. I thought I had a trailer made out of box tubing. I didn't even know they would consider making trailers out of Z-channel. The reason I would want box tubing is for the strength. Of course, you're probably going to put a little bit more weight on it, but the strength would allow you to mount things on the walls, shelves, cabinets, things like that. I would want the box tubing to be on 16 inch centers. If you'll look at this picture, most sheet aluminum or plywood is 48 inches wide. With 24 inch centers, you're only gonna get three studs in 48 inches. One at zero, one at 24, and one at 48. Where if you did 16 inch center studs, you're gonna get one at zero, one at 16, one at 32, and one at 48. So you're gonna get an extra stud for every four feet of the length of the trailer. It's gonna add a little bit more weight, but it's gonna be a lot stronger trailer. The next thing I would consider is how thick is the aluminum skin on the trailer. You wanna make sure that you get an aluminum skin, but you wanna make sure you get it thick enough to be able to do the job that you want it to do. I've also heard people suggest that you want 16 inch centers on the beams that go across the floor underneath the plywood. I would be cautious about that. It sounds good and it sounds strong, but if you intend to put tanks underneath it, whatever tanks you're gonna put on, you need to make sure that you can put them in 16 inch centers before you buy a trailer with 16 inch centers. Mine has 24 inch centers and the gray water tank that I have matched up with my 24 inch centers. As far as the trailer shape, I would definitely myself go with a V nose versus a flat nose. I've towed a trailer that had a flat nose on it and it felt like you had the brakes on it all the time. The V nose is more aerodynamic. However, the V nose gives up space on the tongue of the trailer. You can see the difference in the space between the hitch and the front of the trailer in these two pictures. Continuing on, I would want a side door with an RV latch already on it. Also, the side door catch. The catch is the thing that holds the door open when it's open, and the wind can blow that door shut and it can hurt you bad. You may also consider windows before you take delivery of your trailer. I like the look of the RV windows. They're sharp looking, but they are expensive for what you get. I have to weigh the cost versus the functionality, and I went with the shed windows that I got off of Amazon. I've heard of people going to RV salvage yards and buying used RV windows and installing them, and that's an option as well. The next thing I would want on my trailer is a single axle trailer versus a double axle trailer. A double axle trailer can carry more payload, up to 7,000 pounds. But when you're not carrying 7,000 pounds, you're dragging the extra weight of that extra axle around and you don't need it. The next thing to consider is brakes. I would want electric brakes installed on my single axle trailer before I took delivery. When you get 
2,500, 3,000 pounds, you need axle brakes on that trailer. The next thing you might want to consider is a trailer lift. Cargo trailers are built fairly low to the ground. If you're going to put tanks on it, or if you're going to go to any kind of rough terrain to go camping, you're going to need to lift your trailer up, and an axle flip kit is very easy to install, and they're very cheap. Or you can have it already installed before you take delivery. And one last thing you might want to consider would be a ramp door versus the cargo doors in the back. My wife prefers the cargo doors in the back. I prefer the ramp door. She doesn't like lifting that ramp door. Now, let's talk about air conditioning. In Texas and in southern states in the summertime, you need air conditioning. In my opinion, it's not practical to run air conditioning off of batteries. You're going to have to have a heck of a battery bank in order to support air conditioning all day long in Texas. So if you're planning for a generator or to have shore power hookups with 110 volts, you've got options in air conditioning. The popular thing and the best looking is the rooftop air conditioner. However, an RV rooftop air conditioner can be $800 to $1,500. And if that thing breaks, you're looking at going to an RV repair shop or replacing it $800 to $1,500. In our case, we chose a dual hose portable air conditioner winter unit. It's 11,000 BTUs and we put holes in the floor for the intake and the exhaust. It was about three to $400. If I had it to do again, I would put a false wall at the back of the trailer and I would put a window unit air conditioner in. And the reason is a window unit air conditioner is $100 to $200. Now, I don't like it sticking out of the trailer. I, the false wall could be there and the window unit could be installed. And then when you're traveling, the cargo doors would be shut. Nobody would know that you have air conditioning on the trailer. Of course, it couldn't be run while you're moving down the road. But when you get parked at your campsite, you lower the cargo door down and turn on the air conditioner. The other advantage of that window unit air conditioner is it's cheap. And if it burns up or malfunctions, there's a Walmart or a Home Depot or a Lowe's around the corner that'll sell you another one. The first thing you consider when you're building your trailer is making sure that it's insulated. Either you want insulation on the walls and on the roof. Some people put insulation on the floor and that's fine also. While I'm installing that insulation and the walls, I'm also considering where I'm going to run the wires for the electricity, where the lights are going to be, where the outlets are going to be, what wires I want inside the walls, and what wires I don't want inside the walls. Wires on the inside of the walls look cleaner, but they're harder to work on if something malfunctions. They're much easier to pinch and to cut and to create a short circuit. It's easy to run wires along the baseboard or on the outside of the wall where you can just get to it and open it up and replace the wire or repair the wire. Once I have my walls insulated and everything is sealed up and ready to go, then I'm going to start working on my plumbing. Plumbing is much more difficult to relocate. Plumbing is much more difficult to work around things. After you've got the plumbing roughed in, now it's time to start working on the electrical. You have two different possible systems here, and you've got to consider both if you're going to run both of them. You have the shore power system, which is 110 volts, and you plug in for that. You can run up to 50 amps on that if you want to wire it for it. And, or, you also have the choice of a 12-volt system. 12-volt system is going to run off of batteries, and you're going to have to have a method of recharging those batteries. Recharging those batteries could be by generator. It could be by solar. After you have the electrical system roughed in, then you have to consider whether you're going to run propane or not. If you're going to run appliances with propane, then you need to store the bottles outside of the living area. Most people will store the bottles on the tongue of the trailer. That's where the Venos kind of cuts back on your storage space for storing batteries and propane bottles on the nose. While building your trailer, you also need to consider the toilet area and the shower area. We use a porta potty and it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Of course, you do have to empty it whenever you use it. We do not have a shower area inside of our trailer. There's pros and cons to a shower area. I have heard that a shower will make the inside of your trailer pretty humid. Humidity is going to bring mold and mildew. I personally would rather shower outside the trailer. 
But some campgrounds don't allow you to shower outside the trailer. So if you got a portable shower stall for outside your trailer, they don't like you putting that soap and that gray water on the ground. Once you've got the shower and toilet situation under control, you can move your attention next to the kitchen or the galley and your food storage. That's where you need to have your outlets run for electricity and you need propane if you're going to use that to cook with and you need to have some place to prepare your food and you may need a sink for washing your dishes. When you're building a sink area and kitchen area, you got to consider what cooking appliances you're going to use. We use a propane powered grill. We also use a 110 volt small microwave oven. We also use a gallons 120 volt apartment size refrigerator. Again, it's just like the air conditioner. Yes, I like the Dometics and I like all of the high-end refrigerators. Those things cost in the thousands of dollars. My gallons refrigerator from Walmart cost around a hundred dollars and it keeps everything cold just fine. If it malfunction or breaks, then I can go to Walmart and buy a new one. As far as water storage for your kitchen or galley, you have to consider that water weighs around seven pounds, eight pounds a gallon. And if you're gonna carry 50 gallons, then you're carrying another 350 to 400 pounds in your trailer somewhere. And you have to determine where that weight is going to be. For us, in our tank, we only carry about five pounds while we're traveling. And that's just for drinking water or emergency use. When we get to the campsite, that's when we fill up our tanks for the kitchen area. One of the controversial things that I did was I put a rear receiver hitch on the back of my cargo trailer. The purpose of my rear receiver hitch was to carry my bicycles. And I have a bicycle rack that plugs into the hitch. Several people told me, don't do that. That's not good for it. It's bad. Don't do that. I did it anyway, and I've had it done for two years, and I've not had any problems with the hitch or the bike rack. However, the bikes do get whipped around more, and they do move around more behind the trailer. And as such, one of the bicycle handlebars is putting a dent in the ramp door of the cargo trailer. Other things that you need to consider whenever you're building one of these trailers is you need to consider your tongue weight and your weight distribution. You don't want all the weight on the front and you don't want all the weight in the back. I carry four 60 pound batteries and I carry them over the axle as much as I can because I didn't want 240 pounds affecting the tongue weight of the trailer. We also carry our water tank in the V nose of the trailer and that's why we carry it pretty much empty because that would be an extra 200 pounds on the nose of the trailer. And one of the last things that I would consider, but it's also one of the first things I would consider, and that is trailer security. You want to make sure that when you're in this trailer that you're going to be secure, but you also want to make sure this trailer stays where you put it. And so you can do things like you can put a hitch lock on it. You can put removable chains on it. You can put a wheel boot on it and all of these are good and every single one of these can be defeated by a smart thief it's not that hard all these things are going to do is they're going to slow a thief down a little bit and maybe they'll move on down the road and steal somebody else's trailer and not yours hopefully they won't steal anybody but you don't want them to steal yours for sure i hope you learned something today thanks for watching i'll talk to you soon youtube